Hi there, my name is Rosie and for today's project we're making a sculpture celebrating International Women's Day. I hope you like it, let's get started. To begin we're going to measure half a tablespoon of cold porcelain clay for each leg, kneading that thoroughly, shaping it into a ball and making sure it's very nice and smooth since we're going to be going over this with metallic paint. Making sort of this drop shape, stretching it out, making sure we match the sizing on the template if you're using the template as a reference. And as if we have the right size right there, I'm just going to mark the knee and then make the other leg so they're both roughly the same size. And just do the same steps I mentioned before. And just compare them side by side to make sure they're even. And just remember that the part we're marking as the knee is the back of the knee, actually. So we're just going to twist the other side to get the knee at the front as well. And now we're going to work on adding the feet. On this part right here, I'm just going to measure them both so they're even. And then start slowly shaping it towards the front to get the shape of the foot. Then using any sort of round tool, I'm just going to make the bottom of the foot right there. And now we have the heel and the toes all set. And I'm just highlighting that calf a little bit more. Just like that. Highlighting the ankles as well. And the bottom part of the foot to highlight the heel a bit more. And now using scissors, I'm just going to cut out the spaces for the toes. So just making four cuts right there. And the only one I'm going to round out and separate a bit is the big toe. The other ones are going to stay together. And just do the same thing for the other foot. Once both of them are done, I'm just going to make a cut at the top. And it's a diagonal cut, as you can see, since we're going to attach this to the body itself. And I'm going to do the rest of this on top of this wooden block wrapped in a plastic bag because since we're going to have to be working on it a lot, I want to make sure it won't move. I can adjust the place, the placement of all the pieces and it won't stick to anything while I'm working on it. It just makes it easier to work on this piece. If you have any other kind of material, it will work just as well. We just need something that we can place our piece on so we're not going to be handling it throughout this process. And I'm just wrapping the feet right here, placing them the way I want. Of course, you can just set them side by side. I just want to give her a different posture right here. And making sure we keep the a reasonable enough anatomy. So the bottom part of the leg needs to curl in a certain way so it looks natural or as natural as possible. And I'm just moving along, working on that placement. And now I'm going to move on and work on the body itself. And for that, we need one tablespoon of clay. I'm kneading that thoroughly again, shaping it into a ball. And then I'm just going to stretch that out into a sort of cylinder and then a little bit over the half of the piece I made that indent to highlight the the waist and then as you can see a little bit higher than that I made the indent for the neck and then we can put that skewer or toothpick or just any kind of wooden stick inside the piece to help to help it keep its shape and to help attach the pieces together. Now as you can see at the bottom here I'm just shaping it so it can fit nicely with the legs and I'm just modeling around sculpting around to get the shape for the shoulders her chest the waist her back and after this I'm just again using my template as a reference you can do this without a template it's just very helpful if you have one but it's completely optional and now on the back here, I'm just going to go and add some more details. And 
and highlighting all the details that would be visible from the back just like that now this part here, I'm just going to also add some details around the neck. Always being very careful so we don't lose the details we added on the back. I'm just highlighting the clavicle here, just like that. And now we're going to measure one eighth of a teaspoon to add her, her breast. And I just cut that in half shaping each half into a ball and I'm just going to go in and make some changes here just to highlight the top of her body differently just like that and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue just a little bit of glue here and just attach these brass pieces we had aside to the body itself. Again, making sure we don't lose any details or shape throughout our entire torso. And here I'm just going to smooth everything down with a little bit of water. And since our clay is still fresh, like it hasn't dried, we can go ahead and do this just with a little bit of water, smoothing out the details, making sure everything looks as smooth as possible. And I'm just trying to blend them together here so it looks like a single piece as opposed to two separate pieces. So this is just blending work. Now before we set this aside to let the water dry, we're just going to mark the belly button here, making it a little bit below the waist, and just adding some more details around the waist here. Sort of shaping like around the, the, the belly, just like that. Now once the water has dried, that's all set, and we're going to attach everything together, so the legs to the torso. I'm just adding a little bit of glue here, making sure we don't damage any of the pieces. And the shape is sort of like she's leaning over to the side, the positioning, sorry. So I'm just adjusting that here, adjusting the placement of the legs. And using a rubber brush just to make sure everything's nice and attached together even evenly all around the torso. Now to continue, I'm just going to add a little piece of clay that we're going to blend into these pieces where into these places where both pieces connect. I want to smooth that out, making sure it looks like a single piece. So I'm just getting those small pieces of clay right here. I'm just going to measure them to have a reference. And I'm getting these small pieces right here. And we're not going to be using any glue, just water to place the clay right here and blend it out. making sure we're doing this all around. And this is why I like to work s sculptures like this on top of something plastic, like a plastic bag or acrylic or just anything where our clay piece won't stick to. And I'm just letting the clay fold like it would naturally. So letting the 
we could call them wrinkles, I guess. The wrinkles that would happen naturally if you twist your body in certain ways. Your skin would fall, your skin would wrinkle, and it would just maybe wrap over itself. So different things that I'm trying to portray into this clay piece right here. Just like that, and again, just blending everything together. Now to continue while we wait for the body and the legs to dry, I'm measuring one fourth of a teaspoon of clay, also in black, and just making that into a ball, making it very smooth, then stretching it out like we did with the legs since we're going to be making the arms. And again, we're using our template as a reference to know the measurements. And all measurements are also included in the template itself. Just like that. And now I'm just shaping out the arm, the forearm, the wrist, the hand itself. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other one. So they're both the same size. Now I just made the cuts to get the fingers out. You know the process here from other videos as well, but it's just one single triangle cut to get the thumb and then three more cuts to get the four fingers here. And I'm making them very small, very delicate and using my rubber brush just to shape the palm of the hand. Give it that natural curve. I'm making them a little bit longer here. And again, this is completely up to you if you want to make them shorter, a little bit wider, thinner, you have complete freedom here. And I'm just trying to keep this as separate as possible. You can use different tools for this. If you have a toothpick, that works as well. Just, I just want to make sure each finger can stand out on its own. And I did the same thing on the other hand right here. And once we have both of them, we can go ahead and attach them to the torso. Like I'm doing right here. And I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the palm of the hands. So I can place them around the leg right here. To make it look like she's holding her leg up. And now again, like we did before for the legs, I'm just going to be using a little bit of water and my rubber brush to blend the pieces together. And again, I'm getting that small piece of clay into this very long string and attaching it between both pieces. So right where both ends meet. And that connection here, I'm just using that small piece of clay to fill in the gaps and help me get a nice smooth look. Doing the same thing for the other one and making sure we go all the way around. So it has to be blended at the front, sides and back. Now we're going to continue and work on her face and for that I need a two centimeter wide styrofoam bowl and one tablespoon of clay as you can see here. And I'm just going to sh shape that into a ball so just so we only have the face and I'm going to use the styrofoam bowl to form the head itself so I don't have to use too much clay. I just cut that in half. Well 
roughly three quarters actually and then attached it to the back of the head using glue the back of the face adding a little bit of pressure just enough to help it stay in place and that is it and now I'm using a toothpick or just any other kind of piece of tool like the one I have right here to help me hold the head up while I work on it and start adding the features so I just made the nose right there well the shape for the nose and the basic shape for the mouth to help me start working on that and add the details and make it nice and delicate now I'm using my pinky fingers just to make the eye sockets right there and that's also going to help the nose stand out a bit more from the face and just I'm just again going in adding those details making her look the way I want to for this particular piece and let me know if you'd like to see other kind of faces being modeled as well other types of faces different features as well but for now this is the one I have in mind and I'm just highlighting the top lip right here just like that and I just smoothed down the chin a little bit to make it stand out a bit as well and now using a ball tool I'm making the eye sockets a bit more prominent and that's also going to help highlight that brow bone at the top just like that Now we need to make sure this looks as neat as possible, as detailed as possible, since we're going to be leaving everything in a single color. We won't be able to use color as much to help the features stand out. We need to rely mostly on the features themselves. Now I'm going to use clay as well for the eyes. I'm going for an open eye look. You can also do closed eye. And I'm just placing the small clay balls here to form the eye, the pupil right there. And using the smaller ball tool, I'm just going to add a pupil inside that iris right there. And getting another bits of clay, roughly that same size. And I'm going to stretch these out sort of like strings. And I'm going to use these as the outline of the eye. I'm making the top one a little bit thicker and the bottom one a little bit thinner. Just like that. And just placing it right here. If we're working on smaller areas, you can definitely use any tools at your disposal to help you attach the pieces more easily. And that's it. Now we have that eye right there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other eye, as you can see here. And I just want to add some more detail here to make those brows stand out, the brow area. That also highlights the eyes a bit more. And the nose bridge. Now I'm getting another two small pieces of clay to make the actual eyebrows. And then adding a little bit of white glue just to secure them into place. Just like that, just to work on her expression. Now once everything is dry, all the glue and the water and everything, the fix doesn't need to be dry itself, we can attach it to the body as I'm doing right here. Just adding a little bit of glue on the neck and then inserting that space we made for the head into the like wooden stick we had left sticking out of the neck so I have her looking up since I mentioned before we're going for that empowered look and now we can start working on the hair so for the hair I'm getting half a tablespoon of black old porcelain clay we can use less than that but I want to sure make sure I have enough to cover that back part of the head 
just like that and I'm just measuring to make sure I can cover the entire back part of the head before I place it just like that and the best part about leaving letting all the pieces dry a little bit better before we start working on this part is that we can grab the entire piece as you can see me doing here and it's still a little bit soft it's still a little bit malleable so I still have to be careful not to ruin its shape but it allows me to work more freely with it now I'm just going to hold it here to give the hair some texture and help attach it to the back of the head and I'm going for a effect like the wind is hitting her hair so we don't need to have any specific hairstyle right now I'm just trying to get a nice base to work with and I'm just placing an ear right now adding a small clay ball and then making a small hole in the center just to shape that ear just like that now since I'm going for that windswept look I I'm going to use a little bit of wire to help me support the hair going sideways and make it easier to dry and just make sure it stays in place now once I, hold, I have all my little wire pieces cut, I can start shaping them a little bit. And this is just to help me keep the shape and it's also to help keep the wire inside of my clay piece. And I'm just adding a very slight sidebar here that can help sort of guide how I start adding these hair strands now. just like that and once we have all of them all set up and ready she's gonna look something like this and you can again let this dry a little bit more or you can start working on it right away so for each hair piece I'm measuring one fourth of a teaspoon of black clay and for smaller pieces I'm using one eighth of a teaspoon and I'm going to space them out and alternate between both sizes just to get a more dynamic effect on her hair and I'm just very lightly adding some hair strands here some hair texture and I'm going to start at the bottom right here just adding some glue to the scalp and the wire and then very slowly wrapping it around the wire making sure we're covering all the way around because I don't want the wire to be visible I want to make sure we're covering all the entire piece just like that and I'm going for sort of like very loose waves or curls so I don't want straight hair strengths visible once I'm done here I'm adding just that curly wavy texture just like that and I'm going to just continue working with the biggest one-fourth ones and then start adding the smallest one-eighth ones in between so once we have that side ready like this now for the other side we're basically doing the same thing just making sure we're accounting for the wind direction so it would still be going in my case to the right side even though it's the hair on the left side again from our point of view and adding some more 1 8 ones here at the top also in that same direction and I'm adding another one of these small strands again the small ones don't need wire and just adding it at the top here and just to make sure we can keep a nice balance we're going to add some more hair to the other side and once we're done she's gonna look like this and all set and now we can get that sort of effect 
we get the idea that the air is sweeping from one side to the other. And now we can go in and add the gold touches. So I have this metallic gold paint. It's acrylic paint. And I'm just dipping it in the paint and very lightly brushing off as much as I can. And then very like dry brushing on top of our clay piece. And I'm going over other areas first before I go on to the face because I don't want the paint to be too harsh. And we're going to do the same thing all around. And once we're done, she's going to look like this. Kind of looking like a bronze statue of sorts. And now, just before I, like, you can see me put, putting it here, but the one I'm making is for my perpetual calendar or my timeless calendar. And we can also place her anywhere we want. She would work great on top of a monitor or the CPU tower if you have one or just anywhere you have, even on the bookshelf on top of a book. I might try that out actually. But in my case, I want to add sort of like a fabric wrapping all around her, sort of covering her up a little bit. This is completely optional, so it's completely up to your own taste and whatever specific style you're going for with this piece. So I'm just stretching out this piece of clay. This is natural clay, so no added colors, just a natural color. And I'm just stretching that out, making it very light, and I'm going to slowly wrap it around her body. I don't want it to be too tight, so just keeping it a little bit loose and with movement. Wrapping it back around, adding some curves. You can also cut it if you need to bring it back at another place. It's sometimes easier than having to actually wrap it all around. So in my case, instead of going back under that arm, I just cut it right there and then went back under the leg. And then just met it back into that same place where I made the cut. And that's it. Now we have that small piece of covering a fabric covering her up but again just completely optional I'm just making some changes here so I, I got a larger piece of clay one more time making it thin adding some extra folds because I'm trying to go for a more like as organic as possible and as you already know the clay I'm using here for everything we've done today is the clay recipe I've shared here on the channel you can find it here and that's the one I'm using for everything from the clay that looks slightly flexible to the one that looks a bit more consistent that's the same clay no other changes just how much kneading it has I've, I've, I've done on it or how much paint it has or how stretched out it is but other than that it's a semi exact clay and like I said before this one's for my calendar but if you're going to be placing it on something else making sure we adjust the fabric or these little row beast pieces so it looks the way we want her to and I hope you like today's class one more time I wish you a happy International Women's Day. This project is dedicated to all of us and especially to the woman I love the most, my daughter. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing for weekly art tutorials such as this one. Thank you for watching. Many blessings.